Understanding Networks During this tutorial, you will get a broad understanding about networks in Printix. How to define networks Using the network diagnostics Managing networks and how networks impact users. Printix networks are a crucial element of the solution as we are here telling Printix Cloud how we are able to connect to devices. These IP ranges need to be treated the way they are set up in terms of the routing. So if a network is completely firewalled and there is no port forwarding of ports 9100 and 161 for instance between these two subnets, we need to treat them as separate networks in Printix. Otherwise Printix will try and access printers across both subnets which will then result in a print failure because the print job cannot reach the printer physically. We can also add further gateways underneath each network name. We could open up Printix demo and then manually add a gateway. So if this is part of a routed network of several different VLANs or subnets, we could add these in these fields together with the MAC address. Another way of doing it is installing Printix client onto computers reflecting those VLANs or subnets and then have them added by going to the computer manager and not creating a new network but rather adding it to an existing network. Inside the network properties we can also test connectivity using this button. The pop-up shows that Printix is able to reach resources on this subnet. With multiple VLANs or subnets, this is a very helpful tool to understand if my routing is in place between the subnets for relevant ports Printix uses to send print jobs and monitor devices. We can also see which computers are associated with which network and it's the same for the printers. Another way of adding networks even before Printix client has been deployed to any computer is by utilizing the so-called Printix configurator. We can find the Printix configurator in the software tab. The Printix configurator is a CSV upload tool that connects straight to the cloud database. Let's take a look into the documentation. Once you download and start the Printix configurator, you can upload networks based on the CSV file and what is required is the standard gateway IP address with its MAC address. This is very helpful for failover scenarios where we might have a switch stack that has a hot failover that then of course will change the MAC address. To prevent all computers running Printix client and printers dropping back into the unknown network because the MAC address has changed after the failover, it is recommended to upload all of the IP addresses and MAC addresses up front so that when the failover happens, Printix still knows that this is a particular network and part of the managed environment. This can also be used to do a batch configuration of updating several networks in larger environments. Before we go into detail in managing networks and the impact networks have on accessibility to printers, I would like to point out that the question mark, as usual, will give us detailed information on this entire topic. Understanding networks will give us a broad understanding of how Printix deals with networks. This diagram highlights the mechanics of how Printix handles networks. So each private network or local area network, usually representing sites or locations, is handled as a separate entity in Printix. By having Printix client installed on both computers in each network or site, 
We then get an overview in the Printix administrator in resources allocated in each of the networks. So Printix relies on Printix client being installed on a computer that has IP connectivity to the printers accordingly. By default, I as the signed in user with this computer will only have access to printers and printer queues that reside on my own network. So what Printix does, in other words, is it will filter access to printer queues based on the network I'm signed into. Now these networks could comprise of multiple subnets or VLANs and it is important to note that we need to have port 9100 on TCP and UDP 161 routed between these subnets so that Printix can communicate with printing devices accordingly. If the subnets are not routed, we cannot combine them, meaning you cannot have multiple VLANs combined as one Printix network. If these are not routed, you need to treat them separately as separate networks inside of Printix 2. This will become more clear towards the end of this lesson when we go into managing computers and networks accordingly. Let's take a deeper look into the networks and how they behave when we install Printix client on various computers and add networks with their corresponding gateways and MAC addresses. So in this case, we have two networks, the guest Wi-Fi and the Printix demo. These two networks are firewalled, so that's why we are treating them as separate networks inside of Printix. If we take a look at the computers, we can see that there's the VM that we are currently viewing, and there is my laptop that is currently on the guest Wi-Fi. So when I now go to my laptop and change the Wi-Fi, which I'm about to do now, and I connect my laptop to my normal Wi-Fi, you can see it changed the network association in Printix immediately. This will lead to the following. All the printers and printer queues that are allocated to the Printix demo network will now become available on my laptop. So this means the network I'm connected to with my computer based on the networks, so on the IP ranges, so these are my routers or my switches, has direct impact on which printer queues I'm allowed to access. So if I have printer queues configured to add automatically, this will have impact directly simply by having my computer sign into a specific network. Of course, we can break this down using Azure or Google Groups to limit access by user groups, but by default, I will have access to printer queues that are on the same network as my computer. This includes routed subnets. So if we add multiple gateways to the Printix demo network, comprising of various different VLANs or different subnets, we will basically make a logical network inside of Printix, which means I will then have access to all of the printer queues across those subnets. In this case, we can see that my computer is currently on an unknown network. My VM is set up to use NAT, Network Address Translation. This network is not known to Printix yet. So the only thing known currently is my physical network, which is this range, but not the NAT, so the VM-based network. So what we could do now is go to the computers, open up this computer object, and then use this interface to add this gateway, which is my VM network, it's a different range, to an existing Printix network. Because it is network address translated, I can communicate on ports 9100 on TCP IP and UDP 161. So all ports 
for a baseline installation required by Printix are routed between these two networks through NAT. So this way we can select the network and add this gateway to the Printix demo network. Now that I've done this, we can come into the test connection button and we can see the test was OK. So that's the first indicator that my networks are set up correctly. This computer has connectivity with Printix Cloud. The other thing we can do is we can test the network. The pop-up window shows that this subnet, which is my VM-based network, and my physical network, where my host machine is allocated to, so the actual computer hosting this VM, are both available. So connectivity between these two networks is fine. Let's take a look at the networks now, because that will have changed. In the Printix demo network, we now have both gateways associated. I can only do this because these two subnets are network address translated. So communication is open on the required ports. Let's quickly hop into the manual and look into the port requirements again. So in this case, the two subnets are routed on 161 for SNMP and raw printing is open too. The ports for internal communication between Printix clients are also added to the Windows firewall when you install Printix client. Let's hop back into the administrator. Now, with Printix, we can also enable printing between networks, and this is called printing via the cloud. There's going to be a dedicated lesson on printing via the cloud. But in short, what is possible through printing via the cloud is I can make printer queues from these two networks available to computers on this network or subnet. And what's going to happen is when I print from a computer that is currently allocated to this network, the Printix demo, to a printer on the guest Wi-Fi, Printix is going to transport that document encrypted through the Printix cloud using, in this case, an Azure Blob storage across to a computer running Printix client on the guest Wi-Fi, which will receive, decrypt, and forward that document to the printer accordingly. One thing I want to mention is we can roll back this configuration. So if I were to go to my Printix demo network and click on the bin next to the gateway, like so, I am deleting this gateway out of the Printix demo network. This will result in my computer going onto an unknown network once again. We'll quickly check. There we are. My computer, this VM, is back onto an unknown network. And we can also see this by the little orange dot in the Printix client icon. That indicates that this computer currently is on an unknown network. In addition, we can see that the printer queue is offline too, because we don't have any connection to that printer anymore, because my computer is now on an unknown network. So to conclude this lesson, let's deal with getting this machine back onto the network in a completely different way. I'm going to open my VM settings, and I'll navigate into the network adapter setup. We can see this is set up with NAT. So if I change this now and go to a bridge connection, which means this VM is then going to receive an IP address from my physical network. Now my physical network is still defined. We still have the gateway associated with this network called Printix Demo. So we should see the orange dot disappear and the printer coming back online because basically I'm putting this computer back onto a known network. Okay, so let's quickly do this. The VM is now receiving a new IP address. The printer queue is back online already. The orange dot has disappeared. And if I give this a nudge by clicking on the refresh arrow, we can see that my computer is back on the Printix demo. So I've just taken my computer and put it back onto the network that was known. 
rather than adding the new subnet or the gateway that was provided by my VM to the network called Printix Demo. If you would like to learn more about networks, please navigate to manuals.printix.net slash administrator. This will take you to the administrator manual. Under section two, getting started, we have section 2.2, understanding networks. Of course, you can contact Printix anytime by going to printix.net slash contact dash us. Thank you very much.